Hello everyone, my name is Jessica Barreto. We are doing a special web segment where we're getting to know each one of the candidates running for mayor in the city of Colorado Springs. Joining me in studio right now, a very familiar face, the current mayor of Colorado Springs, Mayor John Southers. Thank you for joining us. Jessica, glad to be with you. So again, uh, walk me through your background and what you believe to be some of the most significant accomplishments during your term as mayor. Okay. Uh, Jessica, I literally grew up with Colorado Springs. I've lived here all my life. I've seen it grow from the point that was 40,000 people to today when we have more than 40,000 college students. We're the 41st largest city in America. As I was transitioning out of the Attorney General's office uh, in 2015, uh, it was really apparent that uh, we had some really significant issues. The political dysfunction between the mayor and the council were such that we simply weren't addressing major issues. Our roads were terrible. 60% of our roads were in poor condition. Um, our stormwater system was so deficient that we were facing numerous lawsuits, including one that would prevent us from turning on the southern delivery system when it was supposed to come online in 2016. Our job creation had been totally stagnant for a year. We weren't even creating enough jobs to allow high school and college graduates in Colorado Springs to stay here. And so, you know, when I, when I ran for mayor, I said, if you let me, I'm going to work on roads. Uh, we're going to get our stormwater system uh, going uh, and get out from under the legal cloud. And we're going to uh, promote job creation. Here we are four years later. We've paved 700 miles of roads, a couple hundred more to go in the next couple of years. Uh, we have made tremendous progress on our stormwater system. I believe that. Uh, in a couple years, everybody will acknowledge we have the best stormwater system in Colorado. We've created 28,000 new jobs in the last four years. And these are good jobs, Jessica. There's 12,000 job openings in Colorado Springs today. Um, of the posted job openings, the median salary is $82,000. As opposed to statewide, it's like 74, 75,000. Uh, so, the issues that I said I'd tackle, I've tackled. We've made tremendous progress. Yes, we have challenges. We've got to deal with homelessness, affordable housing. Uh, I want to bring home all the projects that are in, uh, underway. We've got more to do infrastructure-wise. But I feel very good about the progress we've made in the last four years. And on the topic of job growth, how do you believe the city can attract more newer businesses? Well, we're doing it. Um, you know, what, we're, what new employers look for, they look for workforce. Do you have the workforce that can fill our jobs? They're looking for affordability, utility affordability, tax affordability, um, and uh, they're looking for the quality of life of their uh, employees. We've got all those things. And uh, the fact of the matter is uh, we've got companies here growing and we're attracting uh, new companies. And uh, I'm really uh, proud to say in the next couple of months you're going to see some really big announcements in that regard. So you said you've addressed the issues you promised and there's still more to be uh, addressed in the future. So what is your vision for the city in the next four years? Yeah, well, continuing making a lot of progress on infrastructure. Uh, we want to bring home, you know, the museum downtown, uh, stadium downtown. Uh, we're going to see some really uh, incredible development at the airport business park in the next uh, year, I believe. Uh, I want to continue this pace of job growth and job creation. Uh, I think we need to pay a lot of attention to uh, our uh, state and federal infrastructure that we uh, coordinate with. Powers, for example, is a state highway. Uh, we've got to have state cooperation to expand that, meet needs. Uh, I, uh, US 24 going east with the development of Banning Lewis Ranch, US 94 uh, going east. Uh, we've got some serious infrastructure issues to continue to address. And let's talk about other issues the city has been grappling with on the ballot, ballot issue one, dealing with collective bargaining, which would allow Colorado Springs firefighters to negotiate for higher pay, less overtime. You've been an outspoken uh, critic of that. So why do you think it's a detrimental move? Well, let's start with what, what, how collective bargaining came about. It was a product of the Industrial Revolution. For the first time, owners and of businesses could make fabulous amounts of money off the labor of their employees. And so collective bargaining was a public policy response to allow the employees to negotiate for a larger share of the profits. When private unions began to decline in the 60s and 70s, then unions began to try and unionize public employees. 
But the problem, Jessica, uh, is that we're not fighting over profits. We're talking about the distribution of taxpayer dollars. And the people elect a mayor and a city council to decide, here's your revenues, uh, here's our, our priorities, here's how we ought to apply those. So collective bargaining in that context is trying to override what the council and the mayor think are the uh, proper appropriation. And the problem is, a uh, city budget's a zero-sum game. So if the firefighters get more than the mayor and council think they should, it's at the expense of parks, um, uh, police, uh, public works, and things like that. We take very good care of our public safety professionals. Over half of our budget goes to police and fire. In the last three years, firefighters have received an average increase of 16%. A line firefighter now makes $80,000 before overtime, uh, has a lifetime uh, defined benefit pension, something that nobody in the private sector has. We're systematically replacing our fleet, spending several million dollars a year uh, for fleet replacement. Uh, we're doing a very good job with our public safety professionals. Uh, if we allow the firefighters to unionize and engage in collective bargaining, it is a slippery slope. You can't, in fairness, then deny it to police officers, utility linemen, uh, for city foresters, and on average, if you look around the country, it will take about five to ten years to unionize the entire city workforce. That will be a serious taxation and cost issue uh, for our uh, taxpayers going forward. So is there a compromise here? Uh, the compromise is to continue what we're doing. We meet, I meet with them four times a year, talk about wages, conditions of employment, and boy, has it been successful. Uh, a 16 percent increase in three years. How many in Colorado, people in Colorado Springs have seen that kind of compensation increase? Because I pledged when I met with the firefighters four years ago, I would get them uh, and the police officers to market, and we've done it in three years. Police officers are totally satisfied. The leadership of the uh, local five for firefighters, a little more radical than it has been in the past, and they're pushing uh, collective bargaining. We'll see what the voters say about it. Another pervasive issue you touched upon is homelessness. Yeah. So what do you think are the biggest contributor to this problem and how would you tackle those or continue to tackle those? Well, homelessness is a, is a complex problem, but I break it down into two major categories. One, you've got the situationally homeless, uh, victims of domestic violence, losing a job, things like that, folks that want to be sheltered. Jessica, we do a pretty good job uh, getting those people temporary shelter, vouchers for hotels, getting them in domestic violence shelters, things like that. Uh, but it's the chronically homeless, um, and that is two categories. The people who want to be sheltered, and so we get them into uh, low barrier shelters and then transition them into permanent supportive housing. But the most problematic one is the, the, the segment of the chronically homeless who because of mental health and drug addiction issues don't want to be sheltered. And uh, for those folks, I think we offer, you know, we, we make those services available, but ultimately, if they don't take those services, don't move into our shelters, because we have enough shelter beds for them, we're legally entitled to uh, aggressively enforce our no camping bans, and I think we have to do that. Uh, the city council and I owe it uh, to our citizens who want to use our parks and want to use our trails to aggressively in enforce those no camping bans, and we're going to do it. We're adding police officers. Uh, to the homeless outreach team. We're adding uh, capacity to our camp cleanup crew uh, so that we can keep, uh, clean up these uh, uh, camps more uh, quickly. So uh, we we're, we're, uh, have a uh, uh, homeless court diversion program. Uh, so when, when these uh, folks come in for camping violations or panhandling violations, they typically can't pay fines, but we can refer them to a navigator uh, who you know uh, gets them into treatment or, or whatever and helps them with sh uh, shelter options. What about affordable housing? A lot of folks want to see more of it. So what would you do to help ensure that there is more affordable housing in the next few years? Well, what we're going to do is uh, uh, hope to increase the pace at which we're, we're presently at. The city is not in the housing business. We don't build affordable housing. What we do is take federal funds through HUD state funds through CHAPA, the Colorado Housing Authority, uh, work with uh, housing nonprofits like Grecio, Partners in Housing, Rocky Mountain Land Trust, uh, and private developers who are looking for tax incentives to develop 
uh, and, and try and put projects together. We've been ag averaging about uh, 500 you know, subsidized affordable housing units a year. Uh, and in my state of the city last year, I said we need to set a goal of at least 1,000 a year for the next five years. That's very achievable in my opinion. Uh, but as I say, it's not the city directly, it's working with the nonprofits, working with developers, taking advantage of tax incentives, uh, and using uh, state and federal funds to do that. And moving on to renewable energy sources, as we know, the Drake Power Plan is going to be decommissioned by the year 2035. So which sources of renewable energy would you champion? Well, I think, uh, frankly, solar has the, the most uh, potential with technology changes and battery storage technology. Uh, I think that there's a very good prospect. First of all, I have a lot of confidence in uh, uh, Aram Binyamin, uh, the uh, executive director. I think he knows what needs to be done. We can't close it down tomorrow because of lack of alternatives. But I think we develop renewables. Uh, we also work with grid capacity and things like that. And I honestly believe uh, it's realistic that Drake may close down in the mid-2020s. Now, people have to understand there'll still be a transmission facility there for the downtown area, but that'll be a very small footprint uh, we can do away with the generation facility. And lastly, the city of Colorado Springs and El Paso County has chosen not to allow the sale of retail marijuana. Do you think that was the right move? I do think it's the right move, but more importantly, it's pretty clear to me now that the citizens think it's the right move. The marijuana industry had targeted November of 2018 to put a ballot measure on to try and get recreational marijuana. The reason they didn't do it is because the polls were so bad for them. The polls I saw said for their attempt to make all uh, medical dispensaries recreational, they would have lost by 40 percent. Uh, the attempt to create a half dozen or so recreational would have lost by 12 percent. I think our citizens are fed up uh, with the home grow problems, with the black market, and uh, I think they've turned against uh, recreational marijuana. And lastly, if you could summarize your platform in one sentence for your constituents, uh, what would you say? You know, it's always been my goal uh, to continue to build a city that matches our scenery. This is a beautiful city. Uh, it's amazing that 147 years since it was founded and a half a million people were still the most desirable city in America. Uh, rated by U.S. News and Report. It's our job to keep it that way. All right. Thanks for your time, Mayor Southers. I really appreciate it. And just as a reminder, Election Day is Tuesday, April 2nd. For more information on all of the races happening, click on the Election Watch tab on our website at koaa.com.